A few years ago, I was a university student in Eastern Washington, but dating a girl in Western Washington. I was visiting her for the weekend during the summer when we got into a huge fight around midnight and I left, deciding to head back to my apartment. I mentioned this for context as to why I was driving through Snoqualmie Pass after one in the morning. I'd never gone through the pass so late before, and what is usually a very busy stretch of freeway on the I-90 was completely empty. I went well over an hour without seeing a single vehicle going either way, so naturally, I was driving way too fast. At the time I had a 73 Chevy Nova. It wasn't quite the classic, but it had power and a complete lack of AC. Even though it was late at night, the combination of a warm summer night and the large amount of heat that bleezed through from the engine meant that I had my windows down and was sweating. Not far into the east side of the mountains, around 1.30, I hit a long stretch of straight road that doesn't have any on-ramp or any way to get onto the freeway when suddenly, a set of headlights appeared behind me, something like 200 feet back. I glanced back at the lights, puzzled as to where the vehicle could have possibly come from. I noticed that despite the fact that I was absolutely hauling, the lights were gaining on me. I decided to switch lanes and slow down a bit so it could pass. After a moment, the vehicle now only half that distance, moved over behind me into the same lane. This is when I began to panic. I'm in the middle of nowhere, hadn't seen another vehicle in over an hour, and now I've got some aggressive driver running up on me. I watched as those lights got closer. 60 feet, 50 feet, 40 feet, in seconds it was upon me. I braced against the steering wheel, expecting to get rear-ended by a vehicle going much faster than me now. I watched in my rearview mirror in horror as those headlights blasted right into the back of my vehicle and suddenly everything froze. Quite literally, nothing physically hit me, but the whole vehicle frosted over and I could see my breath. I hit the brakes and did my best to pull over despite not being able to see through my windshield. Every hair on my body was standing on end. I got out of my vehicle and paced back and forth examining my car which was already starting to defrost as streams of water poured down on it. There was no damage to my back bumper and absolutely no sign of whatever vehicle had hit me. Eventually I calmed down enough to get back in the car and drive the rest of the way back, wake my roommates and explain what had just happened. The next time I drove through the area in the daylight, right about where I think the ghost car hit me, there was a very old wooden cross, somewhat overgrown on the side of the road. I wonder what the old wooden cross was all about. The person who wrote this story claims that the cross seemed old and was very hard to spot on the side of the road and seemed to have some writing on it, but he was going so fast, he was unable to read what was on it. Chances are, the cross may not be standing anymore due to weather or high winds. What's even more scary about this tale was that the writer of the story claimed to have been telling this exact story at a brewery one night, specifically the Iron Horse Brewery in Ellensburg, 
and it just so happened that another old gentleman at the bar had a very similar encounter on that exact same stretch of road. But before the writer of the story could ask more questions, the guy finished his drink and left, seemingly upset. In the comment sections of this Reddit post, it seems more people had experiences on the I-90, with one user commenting that their parents were once driving on the road and saw another car beside them with no one in their driver's seat. That year was 1948. If you thought that strange encounter on the road was truly terrifying, I have another tale from a caller who also explains another phantom car whom they encountered on a mountainous trail of road. A truly terrifying encounter that is still unexplained. Hey man, uh, so check it out. This is like the only experience that I could say uh, that, that, that that was a real experience. Um, so a long time ago, I lived in uh, Tennessee in a place called Cleveland, which was near the mountains. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Chip, and I worked at the same uh, restaurant, a Taco Bell, and we would um, take these trips to the mountains and smoke a little weed or whatever after work. It was kind of what we did. So anyway, we were going to the mountain to uh, smoke weed. Um, so let me explain this mountain. This mountain is called Chilhowee. Basically, there's one way up the mountain, um, and that's the only way back down the mountain. There's one road up, and then there's a turnaround up top, and you have to come back down the same way. There's a couple pull-offs. Otherwise, like, yeah, there's nothing but, like, a huge drop-off. So, anyway, um, we're in my pickup truck, like a small S10 pickup truck and we were kind of freaking each other out that day um talking about goats and what have you so anyway we're, we're headed up the mountain when we pass this truck at first it seemed like there was nothing um i can describe the truck still to this day and i you know i know if we called my friend chip he'd tell you the same exact story it's crazy so anyway this truck it was like a blue toyota lifted like mud tires it had a big whip antenna that was bent down into the into the bed it had mud splashes up the side um dark windows and it had one of those orange igloo coolers and a um like a uh, dog kennel or truck box or whatever. Um, so anyway, we passed it. Um, didn't really pay any mind. There's not many vehicles driving up and down that mountain at whatever. It was like 10, 11 o'clock at night or something. So obviously we noticed it, but we uh, kept going and minding our own business. So we get up a little bit further up the road and we see some headlights coming so you kind of you know slow down it's kind of a narrow road and it's that exact same blue truck coming down and we're like weird that was like the exact same blue truck right and, you know my friend chip is like yeah that looked exactly the same so we like you know we examined it like yeah it had the the mud splashes and the orange igloo container and the, it was like 100% identical. So we keep going up to the mountain. Now, mind you, we had like a specific spot towards the top of the mountain. We'd go hang out on this like gazebo and, and uh, chief, as the kids say. Um, so we're going up, you know, up the twisty still. We see some headlights coming again. And we're like, dude, that'd be crazy if it was, 
if it was the blue truck again. And I shit you not, it was the same blue truck. We slowed down and everything, and we're like, what the hell, man? Um, same mud splashes, everything, same truck, like 100% identical. Now, this is the point where we started getting a little nervous, and I asked him, um, was there any way for that vehicle to turn around and go back to the top of the mountain and come back down to, 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 to fuck with us? And, you know, he's a Tennessee native. I'm a Yankee, but and, and, and sorts, so... He's like, no, man, like, you know, and I've been to the top, I know. So, you know, no, man, there's no way, it's absolutely impossible. There's only one road up and only one road down. It's the same road. It's empirically impossible. So we're starting to get a little nervous and, you know, kind of like ghosting each other out a little bit. And it It's pretty scary, I'm not going to lie. At this point, so we're getting, we're almost to our spot, and we see some headlights coming, and I'm like, I swear to God, dude, if that's a blue truck with mud on it, we're fucking out of here, and no bullshit, I mean, I I don't know how to explain the sincerity in this but it was the exact same blue truck for the fourth time with mud splashes the whip antenna the dog kennel the orange igloo so at this point we were so terrified we whipped my truck around in the middle of the road and hauled and I'm talking 70 miles an hour down a, a mountain with tight roads and, and come to think of it now on the way down we never passed that truck um, and we were hauling ass down that road we never passed it we never saw it again I never really thought about that um, but yeah it was it was uh it was terrifying. I, that was the only experience, whether it was a glitch in the Matrix or it was like a ghost truck, we, we still don't know. And, and it's just a terrifying experience. All I got to do is call him and ask him about the truck, and he, like, he will start shivering. So, you know, that's just, that that's my experience. That's the only thing I've ever encountered. I don't know who else has experienced something like that, maybe a glitch or whatever, but, yeah, that's it, man. Deuces, everyone. What do you all think happened in this story? How did that truck end up passing their vehicle so many times if there is just one road up the mountain? Interestingly enough, I found a Facebook post mentioning that the Chilhawi Mountain is indeed haunted. That many stories and legends have been passed down from generation to generation through the indigenous people who have lived on the lands known as the Cherokee. One legend they tell is about a ghostly woman known as the Spearfinger, who has stone-like skin and a very sharp forefinger on her right hand just as sharp as a spear. Her most dangerous attribute is said to be deception, especially because she would appear as a regular village woman or sometimes a family member to which she would lure unsuspecting children by offering to comb their hair in which she would lull them to sleep and then proceed to stab them in the back of their neck or through their heart and then steal their liver for a nice dinner. The attack is said to be so quick that it does not leave a scar and victims do not realize that they are even attacked until several days later when they begin to feel sick and eventually die. 
This legend freaked the Cherokee out so much that they became very cautious of strangers approaching their camp and also kept extreme accountability of those who lived in their camp by staying close to each other and never letting individuals run off because it was quite possible that one of these individuals could have come back as a disguise for the spear finger. Knowing that this legend revolves around the special attribute of deception, I wonder if the car could have been her way of disguising herself to the two guys in the truck, to which if they did get to their smoking spot, she could have approached them and caused harm. Not sure if she could shapeshift into a car, but it's still something interesting to think about. There are other hauntings that are said to happen in that area, such as a orb that many people have experienced while hiking, which is said to be the spirit of a young child that disappeared into the woods back in the 1800s. This orb apparently leads lost hikers out of the woods. With all of that said, we will be back after these messages. I feel I should begin this story with the statement that I am usually a skeptic when it comes to paranormal stories, albeit an open-minded one. I had never had an experience I would truly say was paranormal until this one. I have searched for hours on Google, attempting to find a similar story from someone else, and have had no luck. What really stands out for me is that there is an energy or feeling that accompanies the experience and even remembering it still gives me this feeling along with goosebumps. This is not something I normally experience and most people that know me would probably be surprised that I would be spooked by much of anything. I am a veteran and I have spent years since leaving the military working in emergency rooms, specialized security, and doing other high adrenaline jobs, and I am not prone to being creeped out. I am hoping to find someone else who may have had a similar experience, as I feel oddly compelled to relate to someone about this. With that, here it goes. A couple of months ago, I was driving with my wife down a rural highway in Oregon, returning home from a road trip to Crater Lake. We live on the coast, and the highway we were taking to get back is very curvy as it winds through the Cascade Mountain Range. It was dark as ink, at probably about 11 p.m. We were driving along, and I was watching the road going about 45 miles per hour. We round a bend and just as we get around it, my wife suddenly says, look out, there's a person there. It takes me a second for some reason as I let off the gas. Then I notice her, him, it, crouched near the side of this two lane highway. On my left side is a person wearing what looks like gray baggy sweats or clothes and a reflective vest. This is an easy 20 miles either direction from civilization and is heavily wooded. I begin breaking and instantly the figure stands up, faces us and begins jogging directly at the car. It felt like electricity in the air as when she faced us her head was flopped to the side, like her neck was totally limp and her mouth was wide open. She appeared to have gray hair and her arms or hands were held up to her chest. Her wrist curled. Her legs didn't seem to be working right either, 
as she hobbled at us. Then it hit, this primal feeling of dread, like my subconscious knew something wasn't right. I couldn't fully focus on her, as the car was still moving and I had to steer, but my wife was looking right at her. My first thought normally would have been just to hit the brakes and see what was going on, as once again, this is literally miles and miles from town. But there was just this dread feeling in the air, and time almost seemed to slow down. At that moment, I hear my wife say, Don't stop, just go! Instinctively, I accelerated. As I sped up, this lady was jogging right at us and must have come within a foot of running into the side of our car as we went past her. We rounded the next bend, and I looked at my wife and just said, What the heck was that? I, sh I, sh I should turn around. Who the hell jogs out here? What was wrong with her neck? My wife just looks at me and says, No, don't go back. I don't know what that was. I told her I couldn't look directly at her for long as I was focused on the road, but described what I saw and she confirmed that she saw the same. She said that when she came up to the side of the car, she was staring right at us and my wife locked her in the eyes. But she didn't have any pupils and her expression stayed just like frozen, mouth open. We scoured news stories and I even contacted authorities. They advised that no one was reported missing or hurt out there. I still get this strange, intense, electrified feeling anytime I think about her, as does my wife. Anytime I talk about her, I'm compelled to refer to the person as it. All I know is it wasn't right. We have now coined her the floppy headed jogger. Have any of you experienced something like this? Because if you have, I would love to hear about it. What do you think would have happened had the driver stopped the car and seen if the woman needed help? Several Redditors had questioned, why did the figure wear a reflective vest? Some have mentioned that it could have possibly been the representation of a roadside worker who was killed while on the job, or possibly a skinwalker. Some other Redditors have claimed to have seen similar accounts on the Oregon coast, a coast that is quite the creepy drive at night, especially with all the fog that fills the road. 